Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to review Daughter of No Worlds by Carissa Broadbent. Torn from her family as a child, Tisana only has her wits and a touch of magic to help her survive. On the night she tries to buy her freedom, she barely escapes with her life and is forced to leave friends behind. She travels to the Orders, a place where she can learn to wield her magic, but she must first complete an apprenticeship with Max Antaria's Falione, who wants nothing more than to be left alone. But in the face of looming war, Tisana risks everything to fulfil the promise to those she left behind. I read this as part of my 30 books that I had been assigned for this year's self-published fantasy blog off and this was actually my fourth choice in the cover contest. I had some very strong covers this year and this one is really quite striking. There does look to be a couple of other books in this world by the author but I'm not quite sure how they fit in. This does feel like a really good starting point. Um, it was a really good introduction to the world. Our main character is Tisana and most of the book is told from her perspective but at about the 50% mark the perspectives start to switch between her and Max Antarius. Tisana is a slave at the start and she has been determined enough to save up the money she believes will free her. From the synopsis I thought that this whole part would be more of the story but I was really surprised at how fast this starting point was over before she started making her way to the orders. With the slavery aspect there is a lot of history associated with her character. Off-page rape has happened to her, she discusses it in a very matter-of-fact way, it is a thing that has happened to her, but it serves to fuel her own anger and determination later on in the story. She also remembers a sexual assault in more detail later on in the book. Her absolute will and determination is something that really stood out to me very quickly. She knows what she needs to get done and she knows how she is going to approach doing it. This determination does edge into stubbornness later on and there are other characters who remind her that she needs to walk before she can run. Max Antarius is our other lead character and we see him mostly from Tisana's perspective at first. While the two of them did clash quite a lot early on, it is clear that Max does have quite the sense of humour once he begins to let his guard down. It also is quite clear that there is a lot of shit going on in Max's past story, but he never falls into the brooding, distant, asshole love interest trope. His character to me was just as interesting as Tisana's. I really enjoyed and appreciated the care taken with both of their characters. The book heavily focuses on just those two for quite a substantial amount of time and they're together for about six months before outside events force them into the wider world. They slowly do get to know each other and they actually feel like they are becoming friends and it honestly was quite a delight to see them making space for each other in their own lives. Tisana doesn't immediately become okay after being free and learning magic. She was a slave for years, it has impacted her severely and she doesn't know at first how to interact with people in a healthy way. She has to learn how to do this. And Max also has trauma in his backstory. It felt as though it was handled in a way that did not become gratuitous and each character just had so much depth to them. Other characters were also wonderful to read about. I would love a short story or two about Samarin and his apprentice Moth. Also the friendship between Max and Samarin feels like it has the weight of years behind it. I want to know more about Nora, she has some stories to tell. Zerith and Azine though just feel a little bit more two-dimensional, evil because they are evil. The exploration of magic in this world is really quite interesting. There are two different types of magic accessible by different populations. One of them is more internal magic and one of them is more of an external force of magic. A lot of the book did focus on Max having Tisana practice her magic. While this did slow the pacing down, it allowed not only the reader to begin to understand more about the magic systems as Max explained everything to Tisana, but it gave the space for the two of them to get to know each other. Some of the world building did feel a touch glossed over. While we explore the magic characters and the orders in quite some detail, we're just told 
that there's wars happening. We see some of it earlier on, but I don't really have a flavour of the wider world yet. I have seen some reviewers mention the slower pacing at points of the book where Max is just making Tisana practice her magic by making flowers. I found I enjoyed the slower points as it gave the characters time to breathe. It makes the times of action feel explosive and exhausting when compared to these slower points. I found myself to be pretty well immersed in these slower parts and I found that I would sit down and read 80, 100 pages without even noticing. I do have to talk a bit about the romance. The movement from ignoring each other to mentor students to the huge respect they have to some quite serious sexual tension is really quite gradual. They're together training for six months so there is time for all of this to happen. However, as I said, Tisana is still dealing with the fallout from being a slave where she admitted that she used her sex and sexuality as a tool to protect her. Max does become her mentor but later on is not needed as such but she's completely free to make her own choices. It was just this was in the back of my mind while I was reading the scenes later on. I'm just interested to see how the relationship ultimately plays out because without going into spoilers there are some other huge aspects at this point that make things very very interesting. Overall I really enjoyed this story. It was rich, it was detailed, I loved exploring the world, the magic, I loved the characters through this and I cannot wait to read more of this world. I am definitely planning to read the second one once I finish my group of 30 books. So if you have read this I would love to know your thoughts. Thanks for watching and I shall see you all soon.